In 1955, Einstein died, still convinced that quantum mechanics offered, at best, an incomplete picture of reality. In 1967, at Columbia University, Einstein's mission to challenge quantum mechanics was taken up by an unlikely recruit. John Clauser was on the verge of earning a PhD in astrophysics. The only thing standing in his way was his grade in quantum mechanics. When I was still a graduate student, try as I might, I could not understand quantum mechanics. Clauser was wondering if Einstein might be right when he made a life-altering discovery. It was an obscure paper by a little-known Irish physicist named John Bell. Amazingly, Bell seemed to have found a way to break the deadlock between Einstein and Bohr and show once and for all who was right about the universe. I was convinced that the quantum mechanical view was probably wrong. Reading the paper, Clauser saw that Bell had discovered how to tell if entangled particles were really communicating through spooky action, like matching spinning wheels, or if there was nothing spooky at all, and the particles were already set in their ways, like a pair of gloves. What's more, with some clever mathematics, Bell showed that if spooky action were not at work, then quantum mechanics wasn't merely incomplete, as Einstein thought. It was wrong. I came to the conclusion that, my God, this is one of the most profound results I've ever seen. Bell was a theorist, but his paper showed that the question could be decided if you could build a machine that created and compared many pairs of entangled particles. Bell turned the question into an experimental question. It wasn't just going to be about philosophy or, or trading pieces of paper. And the experiment that he envisioned could be done. You could really set up an actual experiment to, to force the issue. Clauser set about constructing a machine that would finally settle the debate. Now, I was just this punk graduate student at the time. This really seemed like, uh, wow. <laughs> There's always the slim chance that you will find a result that will shake the world. Clauser's machine could measure thousands of pairs of entangled particles and compare them in many different directions. As the results started coming in, Clauser was surprised and not happy. I kept asking myself, what have I done wrong? <laughs> what mistakes have I made in this? Clauser repeated his experiments, and soon French physicist Alain Espée developed some even more sophisticated tests, with one going to the heart of the einstein bohr debate. In Espée's test, the only way that measuring one of the particles could directly influence the other would be for a signal to travel between them faster than the speed of light, something Einstein himself had shown impossible. The only remaining explanation was spooky action. And so Aspe's experiment removed virtually all doubt. Quantum mechanics is true even in the most mysterious and the most weird situation. The results of these experiments are truly shocking. They prove that the math of quantum mechanics is right. Entanglement is real. Quantum particles can be linked across space. Measuring one thing can, in fact, instantly affect its distant partner, as if the space between them didn't even exist. The one thing that Einstein thought was impossible, spooky action at a distance, actually happens. I was, uh, again, <laughs> uh, very saddened that I had not overthrown quantum mechanics because I still uh, had, and to this day, still have great difficulty in understanding it. That is the most bizarre thing 
of quantum mechanics. It is impossible to even comprehend. Don't even ask me why. Don't ask me which you're going to, how it works, because it's an illegal question. All we can say is that is apparently the way the world ticks. So if we accept that the world really does tick in this bizarre way, could we ever harness the long distance spooky action of entanglement to do something useful? Well, one dream has been to somehow transport people and things from one place to another without crossing the space in between. In other words, teleportation. Leave me aboard. Energize. Energize. Star Trek has always made beaming or teleporting look pretty convenient. It seems like pure science fiction, but could entanglement make it possible? Remarkably, Tests are already underway here on the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. We do the experiments here on the Canary Islands because you have uh, two observatories and after all it's a nice environment. Anton Zeilinger is a long way from teleporting himself or any other human. But he is trying to use quantum entanglement to teleport tiny individual particles. In this case, photons, particles of light. He starts by generating a pair of entangled photons in a lab on the island of La Palma. One entangled photon stays on La Palma, while the other is sent by laser-guided telescope to the island of Tenerife, 89 miles away. Next, Zeilinger will bring in a third photon, the one he wants to teleport, and have it interact with the entangled photon on La Palma. The team will study the interaction, comparing the quantum states of the two particles. And here's the amazing part. Because of spooky action, the team will be able to use that comparison to transform the entangled photon on the distant island into an identical copy of that third photon. It will be as if the third photon teleported across the sea without traversing the space between the islands. Sort of extract the information carried by the original and make a new original there. Using this technique in other locations, Zeilinger has successfully teleported dozens of particles. But could this go even further? Since we're made of particles, could this process make human teleportation possible one day? Welcome to New York City. Let's say I want to get to Paris for a quick lunch. Well, in theory, entanglement might someday make that possible. Here's what I'd need. A chamber of particles here in New York that's entangled with another chamber of particles in Paris. Right this way, Mr. Green. I would step into a pod that acts sort of like a scanner or a fax machine. While the device scans the huge number of particles in my body, more particles than there are stars in the observable universe, it's jointly scanning the particles in the other chamber and it creates a list that compares the quantum state of the two sets of particles. And here's where entanglement comes in. Because of spooky action at a distance, that list also reveals how the original state of my particles is related to the state of the particles in Paris. Next, the operator sends that list to Paris. There, they use the data to reconstruct the exact quantum state of every single one of my particles, and a new me materializes. It's not that the particles travel from New York to Paris. It's that entanglement allows my quantum state to be extracted in New York and reconstituted in Paris, down to the last particle. Bonjour, Monsieur Green. Hi there. 
So, here I am in Paris, an exact replica of myself. And I'd better be, because measuring the quantum state of all my particles in New York has destroyed the original me.